Hey guys, in this video, I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun demoing how I converted this USB DJ controller um, into a, a pseudo wireless mini controller for my PC. So I say um, pseudo wireless because this project is using a Raspberry Pi um, to act as a wireless bridge. And that's gonna let us do the wireless control. Uh, I'm using a wire, a, Raspberry Pi Zero W, $10 computer with a LiPo battery attached for an extra 40 bucks or so. But you could use a USB battery pack or whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just gonna connect this to the MIDI controller, show you how it works, and then I'll explain um, how I did it uh, in brief steps. So um, MIDI controller turns on and uh, I can switch over to OBS, switch over here, sorry. And here we can see on the screen that I can turn the dial, uh, select a song, uh, play with the fader, volume, sliders, pitch. Um, you know, everything works. Um, and even the lights on the controller, they have feedback, right? So you press them. Uh, Q, there we go. So this is important because it means it's bi-directional. I'm sending a command to the computer and the computer is sending a command back to the mini controller uh, telling it to turn the light on. So the latency of the bi-directional uh, connection is very fast. And just so you can see that um, it's just the Raspberry Pi battery powered um, powering this. So that's very nice. On, on screen, the latency might seem higher than it is, but that's because my camera has a delay and the screen capture does not. So I think my camera is like 200 milliseconds. And so um, anyways, the LED light is probably a better indicator. So it's sub sub 100 milliseconds, um, roughly speaking. Uh, theoretically, it could be around 40 to 50 milli, uh, milliseconds. Okay, so I am using some open, I think it's open source. It's free software called Mix. Um, this would also work with something like Serato DJ Pro, probably not Serato Lite, because you need to be able to um, program MIDI commands. Okay, so I'll show you how this works. Um, it starts off by using a Raspberry Pi with my Raspberry Ninja project loaded on it. Uh, it's on my GitHub. Uh, there's a folder for our Raspberry Pi with install instructions. You can just load an image of the project, um, update the code, um, the git clone, uh, git pull, and that will update the code to the newest version. Um, and the main file we are using is publish py. And this is a Python script. Once you have everything set up, uh, we can log into the device, right? and we can launch the script and to enable the MIDI bridge mode, the bi-directional transport mode, we just need to tack on MIDI as a parameter. Uh, and this works to auto detect when you plug a device in, a USB device in or not. Um, it does disable audio and video mode when you switch to MIDI uh, that's not necessarily required. I mean, maybe I'll add that in the future, but Raspberry Ninja is primarily for audio and video, but when you tack on MIDI, it becomes a MIDI only transport uh, bridge. Okay, so we are given this link and this is pretty important. And we go to Video Ninja, right? So Video Ninja looks like this. Um, we put the link in, but we need to do a little bit more. We need a virtual MIDI um, device on our computer 
to send the MIDI data to. Uh, so in this case, we need two uh, MIDI controllers. Um, in this case, they need to be two loopback adapters. I'm using Loop MIDI as software. There's a few different ones for Mac and PC. Um, free for personal use. Um, some of them are uh, paid for commercial, but whatever. Uh, you need one for input and one for output. You can't just have one loopback controller for both MIDI for input and output. Otherwise, they kind of get stuck in this loop. Um, so that does complicate things a small bit, but it's easy enough in this application just to make a new port and, and you're done. Um, so this top one will be MIDI controller one. The second one is MIDI controller two, uh, assuming you have nothing else plugged into your computer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say MIDI in equals one and MIDI out equals two. Uh, if you look in the console logs, we will see uh, all the MIDI devices listed. So MIDI 1, MIDI 2, MIDI 0. Um, well, that is our in, and then MIDI out is number 2. Uh, what we see here is we see all this data, and this is all being published to Raspberry Ninja. So that's being all sent over to this. And so we can see the commands being mirrored. These commands are coming from uh, the mixer app. So like the Q lights, if we look at the, the adapter here, we see the lights are blinking. And so that is uh, what's being sent. Um, kind of cool, right? Uh, sort of give you some uh, well, let me finish my thought. Here's the DJ controller software. Uh, this will work with uh, Serato Pro or in this case, Mix. Um, this is a pretty cool piece of software for this. If we go into controllers and the preferences, we can see all our mini devices that are plugged in. And we can go and select our preset, right? We scroll down the list, we find our mini device um, as input and output mappings for these MIDI devices. The open mappings are what controls the lights and things like that. Uh, what we want is we want to have the MIDI controller uh, out, only having mappings for um, the, the respective input output. So this is not correct at all. Um, anyways, um, I kind of screwed that up. Let me cancel, open it back up. The input mappings for DJ out are all empty and the DJ um, go input has input mappings, but no output mappings. So that, that's the only tricky part here is you need to have two different MIDI devices, um, the mappings for the same device, but the input going to one loop back MIDI device and the output going to the other loop back MIDI device. Um, yeah, uh, cool piece of software had all the mappings already in from my controller. Uh, and we just specify the in and out here and everything else is kind of taken care of for us. We can see that when we um, interact with the dial, for example, we see that the throughput on the, on the MIDI in um, goes up because we're receiving data from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that's how it works. It sounds maybe a little bit complicated, but to paraphrase um, everything, we have our DJ controller. It sends commands to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi has Raspberry Ninja loaded on it. That's an adapter for Video Ninja. Uh, Video Ninja is a peer-to-peer, low-latency um, toolkit, let's say. It's primarily for audio and video, but it will work with MIDI. 
and it will send over the local network or over the internet, depending on where the connection is, uh, the MIDI data. So if you're on a WAN like a, or a LAN, it will automatically detect that and use the shortest path. So this is going local to local without having to go to the internet. Um, but it would also work on the internet without having to open up ports. Anyways, um, Video Ninja is browser-based primarily, uh, not, not entirely, of course, uh, because the Raspberry Ninja is not uh, browser-based. Anyways, uh, this page acts as an adapter. You don't have to have it um, in focus. You can minimize it into the background, but it forwards the incoming MIDI data to our uh, virtual MIDI input device, which then feeds that into our DJ software. The DJ software you're using has to have MIDI um, custom MIDI maps, or like you have to be able to uh, set um, the, the MIDI mappings. Um, so Serato Lite probably won't work, but it would work with Pro, I believe, and it works with this software. Uh, now, if you want to have the lights on your DJ controller blink, the opposite happens, uh, you know, sends it to the loopback, sends it to the web page, sends it to the Raspberry Ninja, and then the Raspberry Ninja via the, the Pi sends it to the controller to turn the lights on and off. Uh, it's all very low latency. We're looking at, you know, 50 milliseconds or so bi-directional, maybe 100 milliseconds if you're on a bad connection. Um, it's using UDP packets, so it's very low latency. You can't really get much more uh, lower latency than this. Uh, and it doesn't need much more than the, just the Raspberry Pi Zero as a controller. Um, now, it doesn't have to be a MIDI or it doesn't have to be a DJ controller. It can be any sort of MIDI device uh, for this MIDI mode to work. And you can also use it for things other than DJ software. You can use it to issue commands to the BitFocus companion app, let's say, or maybe you could use it to control volume on your computer, your microphone volume. Uh, you can also use it to control Video Ninja itself. So you can mute your microphone. You can also program it to control um, the director's room. Uh, um, yeah. In this case, though, we're just using it as a transparent bridge. Okay, uh, I hope that was interesting. Um, oops. Uh, again, just a fun little demo. Hope that was a fun little exercise for you. Okay, bye.